everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Mindy Banks, I'm the Flip Flop Chef. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make watermelon sorbet using Pampered Chef's Deluxe Cooking Blender and also Pampered Chef's Ice Cream Maker. I appreciate you guys tuning in today, but if this is the first time you're watching, please hit the subscribe button while you're here and don't forget to join my recipe community. You can find it by going to theflipflopchef.com and clicking the button at the top of the page. I have thousands of recipes and a giveaway at least once a week. So let's go ahead and make some sorbet. This recipe is super quick and easy. It only uses a few ingredients and we're gonna start it in the deluxe cooking blender and finish it in Pampered Chef's ice cream maker. So first I wanna start off by showing you our on the go serving bowls. So these are insulated so that they're gonna keep your food hot or cold. So if you have a Yeti cup that you drink out of for hot food or, or excuse me, hot or cold drinks, these are like Yetis for your food. So this is the two quart on the top. These were designed for you to take them with you. So if you're leaving to take these to a party or an event or to the beach or wherever you're going, these are made to travel. So this is the two quart size and this is the four quart. So they both have the same features, so I'm just gonna talk about the four quart because I have my watermelon in here. There is a little spoon rest that comes with this. It stays stored right here on the top. And once you snap it in, it's gonna stay on the lid. But when you're ready to use it, you just flip it off and it's a great little spoon rest so that you're not making a mess on the table wherever you're serving. Now, this has a vacuum sealed, sort of like a vacuum sealed lead, uh, lid. Um, it has this little button right here that you're gonna just slide open. And what this does is it exposes a little hole that kind of lets the air out of this and makes it really easy to take the lid off. When you are storing food in here, you're gonna press the lid down, close the little slider, and then it locks that seal right on. So we're gonna unlock it again, just pop this right off. Um, I have some watermelon in here, and this is not a whole watermelon, this is just what's left um, from what we started with. But this is a great container to store watermelon in, whether it be just in their fridge to, for you guys to eat at home, or for you to take on the go. So I've got some watermelon in here. We need about four cups. So a couple of the things that you could do. You could measure out four cups, or you could measure it just right in the cooking blender. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure it out in the measuring cup because it's easier for me to see that measurement. I'm just gonna use my hands here, scoop out about four cups of watermelon. Now, if you don't know how to cut up a watermelon, I encourage you to watch that video on my channel. I'll show you the best way to cut a watermelon where you're not making a huge mess and you're not wasting any of that melon. So, rinse my hands real quick. Now we're gonna put the watermelon in the blender. I'm gonna put the lid back on our serving bowl and close that. And then this will go back in the fridge. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take my watermelon, I'm just gonna transfer it here. This watermelon is still pretty fresh, but this is a great idea for overripe watermelon. So watermelon that's kind of overripened and you may not wanna eat it by, um, by itself. And so this is a great way to use up those overripe watermelons. Now there are a few seeds in here. I'm not worried about those. I do tend to buy seedless watermelons. So these are just the white seeds. That blender is gonna pulverize those right up. So I'm not worried about picking those out. We're gonna add some lemon zest and some lemon juice and some simple syrup. So I've got the simple syrup here. I made this on the stove and it has had time to cool off. You definitely don't wanna put hot simple syrup in this recipe before you blend it um, and then try to put it in an ice cream maker. We're gonna skip the step in between where you refrigerate the mixture before you put it in the ice cream maker. I have done this recipe before and I've not refrigerated in between, but most of my ice cream and sorbet recipes, I do try to refrigerate for about 30 minutes, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna just go ahead and put it in the ice cream maker. So let's go ahead and get our lemon zest and our lemon juice. I'm gonna use our zester and juicer. So these pieces all come as one product. You get three pieces in the set. We're gonna start with the zester. It's always easier to zest your citrus fruit before you cut it. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot harder to zest this if you got cut it and juice it first than if you just start out by zesting it. So we're gonna add the zest and the juice from both of these lemons. If you wanted to put some fresh mint in this recipe, I think it's really, really good. I have a tower garden outside and it is literally overflowing with mint. So I want to put mint in there, um, but I know my family would prefer this without. So when you make it, you can choose to put it with or without mint. We're gonna zest this, do another one, and we're only zesting the color. So you don't want any of that white pith, it's very bitter. So just grating the color off of your citrus fruit is what you wanna do when you're trying to get zest. This rule applies for lemons, limes, 
oranges, and grapefruit. All right, so we're almost finished here. I'm just like rubbing back and forth and then twisting around to make sure I get all of that zest. Now, I'm gonna just kind of tap this on there and it gets most of that off. If there's still any left over, you can use a scraper and scrape that in. So we've got a ton of zest here. Look at this. This bowl is just bursting with zest. We're gonna juice our lemons. So I'm gonna take a steak knife, which is exactly the same as our tomato knife, but that comes as a set of four, and they're all gray when you buy the chef's, uh, excuse me, the steak knife set. Or you can just buy one and get our coated knife, uh, coated uh, tomato knife. We're gonna juice this. It's just like your old fashioned traditional juicer. We're gonna juice these lemons. And if you wanna make sure that you get every little drop of juice out of your citrus fruit, you're gonna microwave the citrus fruit for about 10 to 20 seconds in the microwave before you've cut it, before you've zested it, just microwave them for just a short, short period of time, 10 to 20 seconds. And it's going to help release those juices on the inside from the membranes and you're going to get way more juice. So see, it's easy to get. Now, I'm gonna just toss this, so our seeds, toss those in the garbage. And since I do want this zest, I'm gonna take that little strainer part out and I'm just gonna scrape all of the zest and the juice right inside of our blender container. I'm gonna add the lid, turn this on, and I'm just gonna use a custom setting because I wanna just blend this just long enough to pulverize this and pulverize those seeds. So let's go ahead and get this started and I can gradually increase the speed. take a whole lot of time there. I'm going to add in our simple syrup. I meant to do that before I blended, but it really doesn't matter if you do that step first. So I need three quarters of a cup of simple syrup. To make simple syrup, you're going to take equal parts water and sugar and bring the, bring the water to a boil on the stovetop. I use this two quart brilliance stock pot here. And once it comes to a boil, you're going to add the same amount of sugar. So equal parts water and sugar, and you're going to just boil it until all of the sugar has dissolved and it's usually pretty easy um, I don't know if I can tilt this enough but this looks clear so it's easy to know when your sugar is dissolved because it'll start out kind of cloudy but as it dissolves the water looks completely clear so let's give this a little bit of a blend here all right I don't want to blend it too much because I don't want friction to add any heat to this since we're going to be putting this into our ice cream maker. We want it to be as cold as possible. So the watermelon was nice and cold. Um, I'm going to blend this just a tiny bit more. Just to pulverize those, um, those seeds. All right, so I'm going to take this off and let me move my blender. We're gonna switch this out and we're gonna use our ice cream maker. So our ice cream maker, I did keep in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. So let me grab that. I do keep this, I recommend that you keep this in your, um, if in a deep freezer if you have it. If you don't have a deep freezer, you're gonna wanna make sure that you put this container in, as far back inside of your regular freezer as possible. The reason that is, is the, the closer it is to the door where you're opening it, that it's going to defrost a little bit. Um, it's not gonna stay as cold because you're opening and closing that freezer door. So the best ideal situation is for you to put this in your deep freezer or in the very, very back of your kitchen freezer. You also wanna make sure that um, your freezer is set to zero <laughs> or below, okay? So we're gonna snap this piece on here. I'm gonna plug this in and we do sell additional um, ice cream maker bowls. So if you like making multiple batches of things and you don't wanna wait for that to completely defrost and then freeze again, you can have extra in the freezer. So I actually have three of these ice cream bowls. I don't use them all that often, multiple. Sometimes I will do two, rarely do I do three, but I do have an ice cream class on my channel. So you can go and watch the ice cream class and I do use all three of them in that class so you can see why it's beneficial for me to have that many. Um, I'm gonna take our mixture here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the ice cream maker. I'm gonna set the timer here for, um, there it is, I didn't see it moving, 30 minutes. And this is actually going to start 
turning. You want it to be turning before you start pouring in your mixture. So I'm just going to slowly pour in this pureed watermelon, lemon zest, lemon juice, and simple syrup. I'm going to pour that in. And then our blender has a really awesome heated wash cycle, so I can actually add three cups of water and just a single drop of dish soap to this, and it will clean that in no time at all. It heats the water up with the cooking blender, and then it swishes the soapy water around, and when it's done, all I have to do is rinse that and dry it, and it's ready for the next time. Now, I'm going to set this for 30 minutes, but I'm gonna plan to check it at around the 20 minute mark, just to see if it's the consistency that we want. So. We don't, um, it's not gonna be hard, hard frozen. So like if you're expecting what you get at the grocery store, when you buy sorbet where it's a hard freeze, you're not gonna get that from the ice cream maker. You have to do this part first, then transfer it to a container to store it in the freezer. So you're gonna get soft serve now, transfer it to a container. I get these on Amazon and put it in the freezer. And then that is when that deep freeze is actually going to take place. So I'm gonna let this run. You guys hang tight. I'll come back and show you the finished product here before I put it in the freezer. So stay tuned. All right, I am back and our sorbet is done. This is run for 23 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this by just pressing the power button to cause it to stop. It's kind of like um, a granita, so like the frozen ice. Um, you're just gonna turn that. This piece pops off. And then here we have our paddle. So I'm going to take that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this. So you can see we have this soft serve type um, sherbet, or excuse me, sorbet. I'm going to just pour this into, oops, I'm going to pour it, don't make a mess, aren't I? <laughs> I'm going to just pour this into my container. And then I'll transfer this to the freezer so that I get a nice hard freeze from this. I'm using an ice cream spade. This is a discontinued product from Hamper Chef. Um, sometimes you'll find it in our outlet, um, but I love that. It's also a great rice spatula, so definitely try to get your hands on one of those if you can. All right, so we've got our sorbet. This is definitely um, delicious right now. If you wanted to use the spoon and taste it, you could. I'm gonna put the lid on here and put this in the freezer so it'll have a nice hard freeze for um, scoopable sorbet. Now I transferred the rest of my simple syrup into a jar using a funnel and I'll just put the lid on this and put it in the refrigerator and I think it'll stay fresh for about a month. So if I wanted to make this again or if I wanted to use it for another totally different recipe then it's great for cocktails. Um, I'll just put it in the refrigerator and you'll be ready to go for the next time. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make watermelon sorbet with me today. It's really refreshing and delicious. I hope you'll try it. Don't forget to check out my ice cream class so that you learn how to use our ice cream maker for many other recipes. And I look forward to seeing you guys for the next video. That's all I have for you today. Bye everyone.